Vespas? No, please, sir. All right, as far as scheduling, uh, Mr. Vespas, you had indicated <clears throat> perhaps the state's case in chief to be concluded Tuesday, no later than Wednesday. Are we still on that same schedule? We are. I, I'll tell you where um, I intend to go today. I'm going to start with a civilian witness that was a witness that up to the event, um, and then I'm going to put uh, Mr. Woodward's uh, statement that he gave at the Stand Your Ground hearing in, uh, and then I intended to call Dr. Pajoski after that. I think those three witnesses is about all we'll get today. Okay. Um, tomorrow, uh, I intend to put the firearms expert on to deal with all the evidence that we put in Thursday and Friday. And then uh, we call uh, Sarah, Detective Sarah, what's how you, Maxie, Max Maxie, the hard hard name for me to pronounce. <coughs> okay. And we should finish with that. I anticipate that happening in the afternoon on Tuesday, and then I anticipate resting after that. Okay. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Shiner. Good morning, Judge. I'm sorry. I have um, a number of witnesses coming in Tuesday afternoon in anticipation of that schedule, uh, so we should uh, be ready to, to pick up sometime Tuesday afternoon. Certainly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Judges, a little bit down the road, but I just want to take away to do the fact. Uh, Mr. Osmeyer. Robinson there may not be well. So I have an early resolution at 8.30 on the 25th. Uh, I pretty much know what's going to happen, uh, but it only take me two minutes just to check in uh, with the judge down there. But uh, if we can start at 9 o'clock, that would be the best time. Okay, so anticipating starting at 9 o'clock on Thursday, the 25th. Okay. That would be my request. Okay, I'll make a note. Thank you. Do you all want me to take a brief recess while we're waiting on the witness, or? The exhibits? Okay. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and then and take a brief recess. Uh, state can let the deputy know when your witness has arrived, and then the jurors are ready. So we'll bring them in uh, at the appropriate time. So we'll be in recess until then. Thank you. All right, we are back on the record in the state of Florida versus William Woodward, case number 2012-CF55504A. Note the presence of Mr. Woodward at council table with Mr. Eisenmenger and Mr. Eisenmenger, and the presence of Mr. Vespas and Mr. Shiner on behalf of the state. Is the state ready to proceed with the next witness? Well, she's here. Uh, I'm trying to get her outside the uh, courtroom door so we're ready to go. I think she's still downstairs. Okay. When she's on the way up. All right, well, it'll take just a minute to have the jurors brought in. Right. So let's go ahead and bring the jury in. Yes, sir. <coughs> All right. Jury's present. We are ready. Please be seated. Jury is present in the courtroom once again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you all had a nice weekend. And did everyone follow all of my instructions over the weekend recess? Yes. yes. Is anyone aware of any violations of any of my instructions? No. no. All right, and jurors 85 and 87, are your headsets working okay? All right, we both we have a thumbs up from both of you. Okay, very good. All right, is the state ready to proceed? Um, I think so. We're on the way up. Uh, thank you, Councilor Okay, that's your next yeah. witness then? Yeah.
Good morning, ma'am. You would just please raise your right hand and be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Please have a seat over here on the witness stand. If you would please state your full name. Kim Robin Silsbury. Please spell your last name. S-I-L-L-S-B-U-R-Y. Thank you, ma'am. You may inquire when you're ready. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I want to uh, start with where you were living or residing in August and September of 2012. Uh, 1950 Smith Drive, Titusville. Okay. And how long had you been living at 1950 Smith Drive in Titusville uh, by August of 2012? We moved in two weeks before school started. Okay. I don't know an exact date. All right. So had you just moved there, or had you been there? Yeah, already? we had just moved there. All right, now who's we? Myself and my twin daughters, Olivia and Sterling Stunner. Now, had you been over to the residence before you lived there? Yes, sir. All right, how long had you been... Uh, coming over to or spending time at that residence at 1950 Smith Drive? I had been dating Gary, I want to say, five months before uh, we decided to introduce the children together. Okay. And by Gary, you're referring to Gary Hembry? Yes, sir. Now, as a result of having contact with Gary Hembry at 1950 Smith Drive, did you have occasion to meet a person identified to you as William Theodore Woodward? Yes, sir. And how was it that you, that you met Mr. Woodward? Um, it was close to uh, school starting and uh, Gary, or Mr. Hembry, used to um, bring the kids to the bus stop every morning. They were never unattended. Um, Gary always stayed with the children in the morning and then waited for them in the afternoon as well. Uh, I believe that is when I met him. M Mr. Woodward was his daughter, I believe, was at the same bus stop as... Uh, mine and Gary's children. Okay. And so that would have been shortly after you had uh, moved in? Yes, sir. <coughs> do you see that William Theodore Woodward in court here today? Yeah, I do. All right. Can you point to him, describe what he's wearing? Uh, he's over there. I would say green suit, blue tie. Okay. What color hair? Silver. All right. And which end of the table? There's three gentlemen over at that table. Um, far left. Your left, my right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let the record reflect the witnesses identified the defendant. I want to talk to you about um, issues that came up. And uh, I want to focus on Mr. Hembry and Mr. Woodward. Uh, so let's start with what was your typical weekday uh, activity? What was your schedule like during the week? Um, we had six children in the home. Five were Gary and I's. And we also had a roommate, uh, Roger. His girlfriend had a son as well. So we had six full-time children in the house. Okay. So um, I worked all week. I would get up with the children, and I kind of got first shift. The, it, 
I guess, middle school goes to school a different time than the uh, elementary school. So I got the older kids ready in the morning and then got myself ready for work. Stood and waited by the bus stop if uh, Gary wasn't out there or we would both wait. And I worked two blocks from the home. So then I would go to go What to were your typical hours? Um, my first appointment I would take at 9 a.m. And I was home when my last appointment ended it sometimes it was one sometimes it was five it would depend okay All right. and would that be a fairly typical routine or would you be home during the weekdays no i i usually wasn't home during the weekdays if i was it was an early day or uh, an appointment didn't show up or they canceled all right I want to talk about um, an incident, and I just I want to know whether or not you were present or learned about it after the fact, because we aren't going to talk about what you learned, okay? Okay. Um, did, did you become aware of an incident where law enforcement was summoned by Mr. Woodward, and uh, they came over to, to your residence and made accusations about a gift or present or some item that was on the porch of the uh, Woodward re residence. And that would have been early August, like around the 4th. Um, I, was, I was made aware of that, yes. Okay. You were not present for anything that happened? I was not present for the uh, officers uh, talking to Mr. Hembry. Okay. All right. So now let me ask. It, it, it this way, had you already uh, moved into the residence by the time that event happened? Yes. You recall how long you'd been there? School ended in May. Uh, all of our children went to the other parents. So I had two weeks that we were alone. I'm going to say the beginning of um, what comes before August. Well, there's June, July, and August. July. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Backwards is hard. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, I want to talk about well, um, another incident. Uh, were you present for an incident? where there was an issue about some chickens and uh, uh, that was between Mr. Woodward and Gary Hembry? Um, I'm not aware of an, anything with the chickens with Mr. Hembry and Mr. Woodward. Okay. So, so let me ask it another way. Are you aware of an incident where uh, Mr. Woodward uh, asked Mr. Hembry to fight him in the street. Yes, sir. Okay. And do you not associate that with chickens? <coughs> no, sir. Okay. Were you present when that happened? M mention of the chickens, no. Okay. But the Talk incident, yes. Okay. And that's what I'm asking is you were home, you weren't at work? No, I was home. All right. Now, where were you? Located when, um, when you became aware of an issue, um, I, I had heard the shouting, and I kind of let it go for a couple minutes because it had been kind of a routine thing. And when the shouting didn't stop, and I heard uh, the Blakes from next door. I heard their voices as well. I then went outside. All right. Now, do you have a sense of when this is in relation to uh, the incident involving the gift and law enforcement coming over with me? I couldn't tell you. All right. And um, let me. Um, 
Um, if I can, let me get the. Uh, the uh, well, she was at Mark at Case Exhibit One, so it starts there. Let me zoom in a little bit. And what I'm asking is, do you recognize where you resided, where the Woodwards lived, where the Blakes lived? Yes, sir. All right. Can you show us where you were residing at that time? Right there. Okay. And uh, the Woodwards? Mm, there. And the Blakes? That one. Now this incident that you heard, um, where did you hear the sounds coming from before you, you went out and saw where people were? Where did you hear it? I was in the kitchen washing dishes and there's a window, a, a full size window directly out looking to the street, right? Which street? This street. The tree, it's actually on this side of this tree. And it looks out at this road. So that's Smith Drive? Yes, sir. Um, at that point, I really didn't see very much. Uh, I was hearing it because the window was open. All right. Did you go outside? Yes, I did. And where did you go? Um, I went out the carport, which is right here, mm -hmm. and I came directly down the driveway, which is out to the street. And they were, um, I, when I, it was Mr. Hembry. Mr. P. Chor, the and um, Mr. Woodward was actually uh, at, when I came out. He had been walking the intersection, so I don't know which way he came from. Okay. Well, where was he when you got out? Uh, he was like moving this way toward my residence. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show Case Exhibit 35. Are you able to see that? Yes, sir. Do you recognize it? Yes, sir. And uh, is, you, is your residence visible in this image? Yes, it is. Show us where that is. It's right here. All right. So you, uh, uh, recognize the scene. And what, what I'm asking is you're describing that you've walked down the driveway. So show us where you've walked down to. I was at the sink behind this window. I walked out the carport, which is right here. And I, I can't tell you distance, but I know that Mr. Hembry, Mr. Peachor, and the Blakes were in a little piece of grass in between the two driveways. Okay. Um, and Mr. Woodward was coming this way. I don't know which direction he came from, but he was moving in this direction. And um, what was the communication like? And I'm talking about, was it friendly, unfriendly? It was very hostile. Okay. And who was being hostile to whom? Um, honestly, I heard more of a Mr. Peshore screaming profanities. 
Okay. Um, his girlfriend was screaming for him to get inside the residence and leave it alone. Um, and uh, Mr. Woodward was yelling back at Roger and Gary. Okay. And do you recall what he was saying to Gary? I do not. All right. Did, did the situation diffuse or escalate? It escalated. And uh, what happened? Uh, a couple threats were made toward Mr. Hembry. Why? Mis Mr. Peachor then said, made a remark about Mr. Hembry um, having a disability and that he should pick on Mr. Peachor. And I was trying to get both men's attention and get them inside. That wasn't happening. Mr. Woodward was just, they were going back and forth with threats and comments, hurtful things like children. And uh, I don't, I started yelling at one point. Okay. And who were you yelling at? Mr. Woodward. Okay. Now, has Mr. Woodward gotten, where, where is Mr. Woodward while this is happening? He was in the middle of Smith Drive. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit. Uh, does that area, does that image include the area where everybody was? Yes, sir. All right. So where was uh, Mr. Hembree, Mr. Peacher, Mr. Blake? Um, I don't know where the Blakes were. They were behind me. Okay. Where, where were, you, where were you and the people you know? Where were you located? Um, we were in this area, I want to say, close to the road, but not on it. Okay. And um, will you say they were, there were, uh, were there threats or were there uh, name calls or they, both? Both. All right. Do you have a re recollection of what? was what Mr. Woodward said to Mr. Hembree and whoever else? He referred to our children with the N-word, and he also expressed he was going to disembowel our children. Okay. That was when I decided I just started yelling back. All right. Now, what was Mr. Hembree saying Honestly, I couldn't tell you. What was uh, Mr. Peacher saying? Or he usually has said the same horrible things. Okay. Now, how long is it? Daylight while this is happening? It was either right before or right after dinner because I was at the sink doing dishes. Okay. <coughs> was it? Was the sun up? Was still yes, up? Yes, it was. How long did this go on? It was a very heated argument. Mr. Woodward had turned around and gone back to his property once or twice, I believe. Okay. And, and then it got heated and he came back. All right. Now, uh, how did this situation end? Um, police were called. Now, do you know who called them? I don't. Was it still light by the time law enforcement got there? Yes, sir. Now, did, did the law enforcement's arrival and uh, did that settle the issues or not? 
In other words, did that resolve things? I don't remember. Okay. And, and I guess I'm asking a bad question. So the police arrived. I'm assuming everybody went there to their residences and, and the situation ended at that point? The, uh, two police cars responded, if I'm not mistaken, um, and they kept us separated. Okay. The rest of the night was calm that night. Okay. Now, did things stay calm uh, after that, or was there more issues between Mr. Woodward and the people uh, that you've described? I worked during the day. I, when I was home, yes. All right. Let me, let me ask this. Um, was Mr. Hembry working at that time? No. All right. Was Mr. Teacher working at that time? No, sir. Was uh, Mr. Blake working at that time? I do not know that. Okay. Fair enough. Do you know if Mr. Woodward was working at that time? That I don't know either. Okay, fair enough. So, I don't want to deal with what you heard when you got back. What right. I'm interested in is, from what you viewed, did matters calm down between the neighbors, or did they continue at the level you just described to us? It continued. How long did this go on? And I'm talking about, was it days, weeks? Weeks. <clears throat> was there a point in time where you decided to seek an injunction against Mr. Woodward? Yes, sir. All right. Now, did you learn that Mr. Woodward uh, sought an injunction against you and the people in your residence. Yes, sir. And did that flow from the problems that had continued between the neighbors? Did, did both those things, those, those requests for injunctions, did that flow from the continuation of the bad blood, ill will between the neighbors. Yes, sir. Did you attend a hearing in front of Judge Moxley concerning those injunctions? Yes, I did. And who else was present? Um, Bruce, Carrie, Blake, Roger, P. Jor, Gary, Hembry, and myself. Okay. What about uh, Mr. Woodward and his family? And uh, yes, Mr. Woodward was there, and I don't remember his wife's name, Mr. Woodward's wife, and um, I believe it was his mom and dad. Okay. Were other people there as well? The officers that responded, like um, the frequent ones that respond. Okay. How would, how would you describe this hearing in front of Judge Moxley? It was tense. It was emotional. Both um, Gary and Mr. Woodward were visibly upset, tears, their voices were shaken. They were very upset. Now, at the, at the end of the hearing, did uh, Judge Moxley grant any of the injunctions that had been sought? The one you were um, asking against the Woodwards or the one the Woodwards were asking against you or the one Carrie Blake was asking against the Woodwards? None of us got one. Now, how did, uh, emotionally, where were you at at the end of that year? I was exhausted. Do you remember uh, where you went after the, uh, after the hearing? Directly after the hearing, I went to the ladies' room. Okay. 
And um, why'd you do that? I had gotten mascara in my eyes. I was trying to get it out. And had you met a uh, someone that Gary recognized while you were at the courthouse that uh, tried to help? Uh, yes, sir. It was uh, one of the deputies that is in the courtroom. She recognized Gary from, I guess, when they were younger. School is what I'm. I remember. Okay. And so, as a result of you uh, dealing with your issues, did were you able to leave right away? No, we weren't. All right. How long were you? Do you think you were trying to get this situation squared away? Um, I would say about ten minutes. Okay. And uh, were you upset at the time while you're trying to deal with this? Yes, I was. I was trying to get home. The children's bus was getting, it was early release day, and the children were going to be dropped off at the bus stop, and Gary and I were not there. Okay. So, um, you come out of the uh, restroom? Uh, yes. All right. And what happened? I met with Gary, and we walked together out the front door. Um, my car was parked, like, right in front of the courthouse. So all I had to do was cross the road, and my car was parked in the first parking spaces. Let me show you what's been marked as space exhibit. Are you talking about visible in that image? Yes, it is. Okay, so is that the black automobile we're seeing? Yes, it is. All right, can we approach real quick? The attorneys may approach. Ladies and gentlemen, the evidence that you are about to receive concerning other crimes, wrongs, or acts allegedly committed by the defendant will be considered by you for the limited purpose of proving motive, intent, or ill will, and you shall consider it only as it relates to those issues. However, the defendant is not on trial for a crime, wrong, or act that is not included in the indictment. You may proceed. Thank you. Ms. Silsbury, I want to ask um, when this hearing happened in relation to a uh, Labor Day party that, that this subsequent incident happened at. When is this, when is this hearing with Judge Moxley? Um, it was on a Wednesday. And was it the Wednesday before the weekend this happened? Yes, sir. And I think when, when we stopped and took a break with the judge, we'd gotten uh, to where your automobile was parked outside the uh, courthouse in Titusville? Yes, sir. And at that point in time, um, well, where did you go? Uh, were you with Mr. Hembree? Yes, I was. All right. Was anybody else with you at that time? No, sir. And the, the court deputy that you, that you met? Was the court deputy with you after you left the courthouse? She said goodbye to Gary, This I want to say, second step. Okay. And then she turned around and went back in. All right. So um, what did you have to do to get to your automobile from there? There were a couple steps, um, a sidewalk, and then a narrow road, another sidewalk, and then the parking lot. And uh, did you go, go to your car? I went directly to the passenger side of my car. All right. And were you going to be the passenger or were you going to be the driver? I don't recall. OK. 
Okay, but that was the door I had to open with the key to that door. And did anything happen while you were um, at your car? Uh, yes, I leaned in to unlock the driver's side door for Mr. Hembry, and I was lighting a cigarette. And I don't remember which was first or second, but it was all at the same time. Okay. And so um, you're in the process of getting into your car, and does anything happen? I looked up when Mr. Hembry opened up the driver's side door, and um, through the window, I saw Mr. Woodward coming out of the courthouse okay. the same way we did. All right. And um, so they're, they're across the street at this point? Yes, sir. Do you, do you recall who was with Mr. Woodward? At that point, no. Right. And what happened after that? He, um, I alerted Gary. I said, Gary, turn around. He's right behind you. And he hadn't crossed the street yet. He was still on the sidewalk on the courthouse sidewalk side and he pointed at myself and Gary and said are you prepared to die okay. and by he who are you referring to Mr. Woodward person you early identified yes sir and then what happened he then walked very it, he was very quick across the street, and he assaulted Gary. All right. Rather than saying assaulted, what did you see him do? Stick his thumbs in his eyeballs. Okay. And what was Mr. Hembry doing while this is happening? He was trying to push him off. And where is this happening? Uh, on the driver's side of my car. All right. And... Is it right next to your car, or away from the car? How at that, at, in the beginning, it was right next to my car. Okay. So this is this has occurred. What happens after uh, the initial contact that you're observing? Um, I realized that his fa Mr. Woodward's father and mother were present with him, and wife were present with him at that moment everybody was screaming for the guys to get se to separate okay so that, did that include you I was in the middle of it okay so get us from where you are because right when when the last time we heard where you were you're in the passenger side of the automobile yeah all right did you stay in did you get out of the car what'd you do um, I was just bent in the passenger side. I hadn't gotten into the vehicle. So when I saw Mr. Woodward approaching quickly, um, I let Mr. Hembry know and told him to get his phone out as quickly as he possibly could so we could record the threats. And as I was yelling at Gary, I was getting to that side of the car. All right. So are you on that side of the car when... Mr. Woodward uh, grabs or touches uh, Mr. Hembry? Yes, sir. And uh, so what he's, he's got a hold of him on his head? Is that what he had his thumbs in his, in Mr. Woodward had his thumbs in Mr. Hembry's eyes and his fingers were behind his ears. It was like that. <laughs> All right. And uh, are they just standing there, or what's happening? No. Gary was trying to get him off him, and it wasn't working. And so what happened next? I had a cigarette in my hand, and I remember jumping on him. Jumping on who? Mr. Woodward. Okay. So did you jump on his back? remember. Okay. Did you burn him with the cigarette? Yes, I did. Did that stop it? No, it did not. 
What happened after that? Uh, Mr. Woodward's mother or wife, I don't know which one, uh, wound up in the parking lot yelling about and grabbing their chest. And I remember Gary <coughs> yelling and I went over. I, for some reason, I was like in the middle of that. I don't remember why. You were in the middle of the of struggle? The, yes. All right. And Mr. Woodward's father moved me onto the ground in the parking lot. So he pulled you out? Yes, pulled he you did. Off? Yes. All right. And what happened after that? Uh, somebody driving by came out with a can of mace or pepper spray and sprayed everybody. Okay. Did that stop it? I believe so. Now, did you return to your residence um, after that incident had concluded and you communicated with the people you needed to communicate with? Yes, sir. And uh, was Mr. Woodward back at his residence as well? He had been there before us. Okay. And uh, did the uh, relationship between Mr. Hembree and Mr. Woodward get any better than it had at that particular point where this incident happens there at the courthouse? No, sir. So that's Wednesday, then you've got Thursday and Friday. Uh, and how are things in the neighborhood? Uh, Mr. Woodward would take his dog for a walk three times, I can say, when I was home, at least three times I witnessed every day. And he would walk his dog directly in front of our home all three times. Now, um, do you remember what day of the week you had a, uh, a barbecue, a get-together at your residence? I want to say it was Sunday. Okay. So, four days later? Yes, sir. <coughs> and... Um, do you know what time the barbecue began? Close to dinner time, a little bit after five. Sun still up? Yes. All right, and <coughs> who, who came to the barbecue? Uh, it was... Myself, my 15-year-old son. What's his name? Devin Catalo. Uh, Mr. Hembry. Mr. Hembry's oldest son, Zachary Hembry. Uh, Bruce and Carrie Blake. Mm -hmm. And their two daughters, I don't remember their names. Crystal is one of them. Okay. How old were they? I don't remember. Oh, and Mr. Peachor and his girlfriend and their son, Daniel. And Mr. Peachor's oldest son, Justin. 
So there were two sons? Yes. Daniel and Justin? Yes, sir. Now, during this uh, get-together, was there words or, or things said in the direction of the Woodward residence where, while you were present? No. Okay. I, I wasn't present for any yet. Okay. And I'm talking about this is during the daytime. Right? Right. Was there alcohol served? Yes, sir. All right. Were people getting impaired? Yes, sir. After, um, after it got dark, were, was anyone from the group you were with saying anything about the Woodwards or to the Woodward residents? Yes, sir. Now, did you become aware or were you aware that there was a uh, surveillance video recording system over at the Woodwards? I was. How long before this uh, get-together had you been aware of it? A couple weeks. Did all the adults at the party, and I'm talking about the Blakes, Mr. DeCour, uh, Gary Hembry, uh, did all of them know about this surveillance system? Yes, sir. Did you, or were you aware that uh, people would go down the street and uh, moon or show their behinds to the, towards the camera, towards the Woodward residence? Were you aware of that happening? Um, I was aware of the boys pulling their pants down. Uh, they were not in the street. They were in our yard. Were you, so that's something you witnessed? Yes, it is. Right. Were you aware of a, uh, of something being burned at, at, at the, right at the street of, of your residence? I was. Driver. You were not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you remember how much? How impaired you'd gotten by the, uh, towards the end when this incident happened? How impaired had you gotten? I had stopped drinking. Okay. Do you think it would have been safe for you to operate a motor vehicle if, with the amount of alcohol you had consumed? No, sir. Okay. How about uh, Mr. Blake? Did you observe him? Not really. Okay. And the reason I'm asking is I wanted to know if you'd formed an opinion about how impaired by alcohol he was. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. He, he was impaired. Do you think he was more impaired, less impaired, the same as you? <laughs> the same? All right. How about Mr. Kaur? Uh, had you observed him, and did you form any impressions about his level of impairment towards the end of the evening before he was killed? Uh, he was uh, definitely impaired.
And then Gary Hembree, same, same question. Uh, yes, he was impaired as well. Had any, any of you gotten so impaired it affected your ability to, to walk? No. Okay. So at least from the observations you made, people were able to walk without stumbling or uh, falling down or things like that. I witnessed some stumbling. <laughs> okay. All right. So people were impaired to the point where they were stumbling. Yes, sir. Did you become aware of a, uh, a vehicle that Justin Pecour had arrived in, a truck that was parked between um, your residence and the Blake residence at the street? I was. Do you recall whether or not that truck left um, while this uh, gathering was happening and then subsequently came back sometime later? I, yes, it did. Do you remember who left? I do not. Now I want to go um, deal with what's going on before you go inside for the last time before uh, the shooting happens. So I want want to want you to tell us what you're seeing happening out in the uh, front yard area between the Blake and the and, and your residence. Um, I was gathering food and emptying less filled containers into more filled containers trying to consolidate food. Uh, but it, it was on a section between the Blakes and my residence um, under a like tarp canopy thing. Okay. Uh, at that point, uh, I had Roger Peachor's son, Justin, um, pulled up in that vehicle that you just said, the uh, little red pickup truck. Okay. Um, that's kind of when I noticed it, was right before we went inside. Okay. Was so um, you're picking up, uh, and I believe, let me see. Yes, sir. Okay. Does that image include the area where you were talking about cleaning up? Yes, sir. Can you show us? Right there. Okay. Now, you're outside uh, doing that. You observed this pickup truck, truck pull up with Mr. Picor, Justin? Uh, Yes, Justin and a friend or two. I'm not, I'm, I don't And did you know whose truck that was at the time? At the time I did. All right, don't remember now. No. Fair enough. Now I want to ask about, um, so you saw... Justin, what about everybody else? Do you remember where they were? I can move this around. Do you remember anybody else was outside besides you and that truck? Uh, yes. I, my, my son 
Devin Catalo and um, Justin and the boys that were in that vehicle okay. were all, you know, handshaking, hugs. They were all uh, saying hi to each other. Okay. And Mr. Peach or was standing in about this area, kind of saying hi to everybody too. Okay. And do you remember where Mr. Blake was? I do not. Do you remember where Mr. Hembry was? I do not. Now, is this the last time you're out before the uh, shooting occurs? Yes, sir. And so you go inside, and what are you doing? I was bringing food inside. All right. And did you eventually get it all in where you're inside? No, I didn't. Um, Gary and I had, uh, Gary had barbecue sauce on his face and his hands. And so I had just bought a new bedspread and pillow shams. And he was going to wipe his face all over them. So he ran back to our bedroom and playing around. And I was trying to make sure he didn't wipe the barbecue sauce all over the new bedspread. Okay. Now, do you have a sense of time of how long you've been in uh, the residence uh, and, and these things are happening? I know it's been a while. No. Right. Was there a time where you're in the residence and Mr. Hembry is still outside? Earlier in the evening. Okay. I'm talking about, let me ask, I'm asking like right now. I'm trying to remember, did you <laughs> come in the residence and Mr. Hembry is already in there getting ready to wipe his face? Or is he coming in and doing that after you're already inside? I followed him in. Now you mentioned, and I'm going to go to State's Exhibit 6. Okay, this particular scene is the uh, truck you're referring to in it, the, the one that Justin showed up? I can't up. see. You can't, do you need to step down? <laughs> no, like I... I can't see. All right. Uh, would it assist if you came and looked at the image on the view screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. With the course permission, could the witness step down and, and view the image on the view screen? You may. Okay, so you see the truck uh, that uh, this, that you observed Mr. or Justin Ford come up in? Can you show the jury where that is? Yes. Okay. And then is the door that you uh, followed Gary into, is that visible in this image as well? Yes. Where's that? Right there. Okay. That looks like there's some steps up to it. Now, um, may the witness be reseated? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to use State's Exhibit 40. You recognize State's Exhibit 40? Yes, sir. And do you see the entry door to the residence we were talking about in the, in the preceding exhibit? Yes, sir. Can you show us where that is? Right there. Now, is this the same black car that you, um, that you took to the courthouse and that incident at the courthouse on the previous Wednesday, is that visible in this image as well? Yes, it is. Can you show us where that is? Well, 
while you're inside with uh, Mr. Hembry, do you have a sense of what time it is? You're, do you have a sense of what time of day it is at this particular point in time? I know it was definitely getting late. Okay. And we were paying attention to the time because we had the radio on. Okay. And we didn't want to get our neighbors mad. So, do you have a sense of if it's still September 2nd or it's after midnight? Do you have a sense of that? No. Now, did something occur while you were in the, in the residence with Mr. Hembry uh, that caused the two of you to go outside? Yes, sir. And what happened? Um, I heard a loud banging. Okay. Did Mr. Hembury react to the banging? He told me I was silly and it was fireworks. Oh. And what happened after you heard the noises outside? I jumped up and started to walk. Actually, I was running toward the door to get outside. Um, both of our sons were out there. Okay. So what was Mr. Henry doing? He was stumbling behind me. <coughs> I, I just remember him behind me. Okay. And did you did you get outside? Yes, sir, I did. Now, what did you do? I was yelling for the boys. Okay. And where did you look? I when I opened up the door, I actually heard a noise, um, and it was toward our uh, laundry room. I'm going to show you what the marker is exhibit six. I'm going to put that back on the view screen. Is the area that you heard the noise of? Okay, and so you heard a noise as you come out of the door to your left as you're coming out of the house? Yes, sir. All right, and so that's, that's the direction that you look? Yes, sir. Are you still up on the step or have you come down? Uh, Are you aware of Mr. Hembry, where he is? He was behind me. And... Um, so you created this, and so what happens? I walked toward the laundry room. Okay. I went left. And, uh, what happened? I saw Justin Pejor okay. was in there and asked him where my son was. You asked him what? I asked him where my son was, if he had seen him. Okay. So you saw Justin back in this back area around your laundry room? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, what happened after? Did you actually have time to communicate with him? Yes, I did. All right. And then what happened? I turned around and went back toward the door. I thought that Gary was right behind me, but he wasn't. He was still inside the house in the threat, like in the doorway. Okay. All right, so you're walking back towards Mr. Hembry and you're heading towards the, the door so we see it. Right, it's like green? Yes. Okay. And so what happens? I 
looked inside the house once again, um, uh, Gary had his arm up on the door, like in, in the like doorway. So he had his arm up, and he was very tall. And I looked under his arm, yelled for the boys again inside the house. Nobody answered. I turned around to go back outside, and that was when Gary actually came out of the house behind me. All right. Now, at this during while you're doing these things, have you heard any more sounds like you'd heard that were inside the house? I was hearing gunshots. Yes. <coughs> So you were hearing that as you're wandering around the carport area? Yes, sir. When you walk back uh, down the stairs, the, the steps, um, do you have a sense of where Mr. Hember is? He had grabbed the back of my shirt. Okay. So he's behind you? Directly. And what happened? Um, the door swung open and blocked my view to the street. Okay, this is an out, out opening door. Yes, sir. So when the door opens, you can't you can't see the street. No. And what happens after that? Um, I remember hearing more gunshots and Gary I don't know whether he fell on me he his body weight was on me and I was uh, under the car I, I was either crawling or he pushed me I'm not sure either way that's where I wound up was under my car okay and I'm going back to Exhibit six again. Actually, that's a really bad. I can't even see the steps. Okay. Can you show us where you were as this incident is unfolding and where you ended up and where Mr. Hembry ended up? Um, Mr. Hembry ended up right where he is. Okay, that's Mr. Hembry right there? Yes, sir. Okay, and you, you, are the steps that you've been talking about visible in, the, uh, in this particular image? Yes, sir. Right. And so... Tell us again, you, you, you hear some gunshots? Yes, sir. And then you feel Mr. Hembry? Yes. And then what happens? Do you fall down? What happens? I, I remember my knees buckled. I was underneath the car behind Mr. Hembry's head. Okay, I'm going to show another angle of of the same type of image. I think you've seen this before. Yes, sir. Um, and what I'm doing is trying to orient where you're located in relation to Mr. Henry. Okay. So I'm going to show you what's been marked as exhibit 105. Can you see that? Yes, sir. All right. Now, Mr. Henry's on the ground right next to your car. Is that fair? Yes. Where are you located? I'm behind the tire right here. Are you, and you're under the car? I was under the car. My belly was on the ground. Now, do you become, 
you become aware of what's going on around you as you're under this car? Um, uh, my ears were ringing. And I still hadn't seen any of the boys' feet from where I was, so I was trying to get out the other side of the car. All right. Are you hearing anything? Like I said, my, my ears were ringing. I, I was hearing gunshots, but my ears were ringing. Okay. Are you seeing anything that you're associating with the gunshots? Uh, yeah, I saw Mr. Woodward's feet uh, come around the back tire of my car. Okay. And what I'd like to, when, when you're describing that, what direction are you seeing the, the uh, feet come from and head? I... The feet picked up in the corner. I don't know which way he came from. That was when I saw him. Right. I don't want you to guess. I want you to tell us where is it you first wrecked, you, you saw some feet. I saw feet at the back tire back here. Okay. And what direction did the feet go? Toward Gary. <clears throat> and are you still under this car near the tire? Yes, sir. And... What happens is the he was shooting. And do you, are you able to uh, appreciate how many times he's shooting? No. Are you seeing what's happening to Gary from this? Yes. And what do you see? His body was moving. Were you under there the, for the rest of the gunshots? No, sir. Okay. Do you need to take a break? No, okay. So, you see the feet come and the shots happen. What happens after that? I looked up from underneath the car. I could see Mr. Woodward's face. Where's, where is he? He was standing over Gary. All right. And what happened after that? I was just thinking about where my son was. I was I was trying to get out the other side of the car. Right. Did, um, did there come a point in time where you recognized that the shooting had stopped, or did it keep going on after that? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. Did you get out from under the car? Yes, sir. When you got out from under the car, were you able to see Mr. Woodward anymore? No. Do you remember if the either of the windows were down in your automobile? I don't. 
You know what I'm asking you? The front passenger and the driver's side windows, do you remember if those were down and you don't? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> do you remember the condition of your automobile before the uh, shooting happened? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 109. First, do you recognize that as your automobile? Yes, sir. Okay. And before the shooting happened, was the back window in your automobile intact? Yes, sir. been identified as a bullet hole. Was that hole there before uh, this incident happened? No, sir. Okay. Was your car uh, undamaged by any type of uh, uh, firearms or projectiles? Uh, yeah. In other words, there weren't, was there any pre-existing damage for gu from gunshots? No. Uh, no. Was there... Um, was there any shell casings that were, spent shell casings, that were in your car the last time you parked it in that, in that spot before the shooting happened? No, sir. Do you recall how long it was? Well, let me ask this. When you got out from, from, under the car. Um, did you uh, recognize at some point the police arriving um, to the scene? Yes. Sir. Do you recall how long it was? And I know you aren't. You don't have a watch on. But do you have a sense of uh, if it was fairly quick or it took a while? It was. It was fairly quick. Had you seen law enforcement driving by your residence earlier in the evening um, uh, prior to this incident happening? A couple times, yes. Did you see Mr. Woodward having contact with law enforcement after they arrived. In other words, did you see him in, in uh, contact or custody with law enforcement? Uh, <coughs> the last time I saw Mr. Woodward, he was laying face down in the street on Smith Drive. Was a police officer there with him? They just pulled up. They weren't out of their vehicles yet. The officers were not out of their vehicles yet. Now, I'm assuming you were very emotional at the time? Yes, sir. Um, did you attempt to convey to the officer what had happened? Or do I, you remember? I remember yelling because my ears were still ringing. And I remember walking up to as many people as was coming to the crime scene. And uh, asking them if Gary was okay, asking them different, I don't, I don't remember what I was asking. I remember asking a couple times if Gary was okay. Now I want to talk to you about the last time you saw Gary in the house before he's pulling on your shirt and coming out with you. The last time that you saw him, did you see whether or not he had anything in his hands at all? Uh, he had a cup in his hand, a mug. All right, like a coffee mug? Yes, sir. 
That was it? That was it. Now this um, residence that you're at that we've been talking about, and there's still an image of it up on the view screen right now, is that in Brevard County, Florida? Yes. <coughs> I don't have uh, any other questions. Can I have the attorney's approach, please? All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good uh, stopping point for a restroom stretch break. So if you would leave your notebooks on the chairs, make sure that you follow all of my instructions during our recess, and we'll bring you back in in about 10 minutes or so. Thank you.